Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you yet another painting tutorial. This time, again, I'm going to smash through the idea that um, some Warhammer monsters are hard to paint when they're in fact very, very easy. The one that we're going to be working on today is Bellacor, the first demon. Uh, this model was released by Games Workshop a couple of months ago. It's an absolutely stunning piece um, and I have seen a lot of people worried about painting it. <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys how using contrast paints, a few select dry brushes, um, and just a few touches of detail, um, you can get this model looking absolutely fantastic in no time at all. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is the model at the beginning. Uh, this is how I've prepped it. So Bellacor himself has been sprayed with black and then zenithled with grey sear spray, like I do for most of my stuff. And the miniature on the base has been sprayed um, Mechanica Standard Grey, the uh, Rocky Outcrop he's standing on. If you've noticed, I've also left all of the chains off his wings, um, but we will get back to that in a minute. <clears throat> uh, so the first paint we're going to apply is the Basilicanum Grey Contrast Paint. We're going to apply this all over the skin. You got to take your time and get really good coverage. So like I've said in a couple of videos before, you want to overload your brush, quite a lot of contrast, slop it onto the area that you're trying to apply it to, and then manipulate the wash, move it around um, to where it needs to be, all the nooks and crannies and all the recesses, and then pay attention for a couple of seconds where it's going to pool and drag that excess paint away, wipe it away on a tissue or your hand or whatever. When that all dries, it should look something like this, which I think is a beautiful place to start painting this properly. Now, if you pay attention to the artwork, you can see that his chest and wings are actually a slightly different color. So I'm going to go over with a second contrast, a Skeleton Horde. We're going to give this an all-over coat on his chest, uh, the ridges running down his back, and his wings. Like I said, the darkness of the Basilicanum Grey will stay. This will just tint it a um, slightly more fleshy color, slightly more alive color, if you know what I mean. hard to see from this angle if you want to take your time you do not want to cover up the uh, the membranes or the the wing arms there you want to keep those with the basilicatum gray and also his chest like i was talking about the light coat you don't want to give it uh, full coverage cover up those first set of muscles down his ribs and the second set of muscles on his ribs you just uh, leave them with the basilicanum grey looking good now so we're going to be doing things in stages so I've just put on that uh, skeleton horde coat on the wings while that's drying I'm gonna get started on the base like I said at the start on this is just sprayed black and then dusted with Mechanica standard grey so the first thing I'm going to do is throw an Agrox Earthshade um, all over the rocky outcrops. You're going to load up your brush quite heavily to get into all those nooks and crannies. As you can see, I like to use a stabbing motion just to make sure it gets in everywhere. Like this model, I believe, is already like a 10 out of 10. It's perfect. And then you slap it on top of a base that's that cool. Uh, yeah, I just wish I could buy this base separately. I could put a million different things on top of it. So this is what the skeleton horde looks like after it's dried. Like this is so far two coats of contrast and look at those wings. Just, yeah, I just love it so much. But we're going to add even more detail. So we're going to go for a storm vermin fur. And we're going to lightly dry brush the uh, the miniature. As you can see, I'm struggling painting this thing without a base. Um, yeah, painting the base separately and then painting this thing. It means this thing keeps falling over. So, Skaven Blight Dinge, or Storm Vermin Fur, sorry. As you can see, I'm just lightly trying to catch all those raised areas on the wings. It's super difficult to tell because I'm going for such subtle dry brushes. Just add a little bit of accent color. So what I will do is I will uh, dry brush one wing and then I will come back and show you the two wings side by side so you can see the, uh, the difference. Um, it really stands out then. Also want to work on his chest. A 
And then we're going to work our way around the, uh, the rest of the miniature as well. At this point, I did dry brush his uh, horns up. Um, as I got later into the paint job, I thought that the horns were a little bit too samey to the skin. So I changed them up, but you'll see that later. So here's the one wing dry brushed versus one wing not dry brushed. You can see there's a clear difference now, even if you couldn't see it previously in the video. And there we have it. The wings are dry brushed on both sides. They have a lot of depth to them now. It looks like we put in a lot of work. And so far it's contrast and dry brush. Tyrant Skull, it's gonna be another dry brush. This one a lot lighter, um, just to catch those membranes again. And add that final bit of highlight, a little bit of detail to the, uh, the skin and the wings. You wanna be careful with this, you don't have an overloaded dry brush. Like I said, those lines on the wing that you can see popping up now that we're brushing over it with the bone, that's basically all we're trying to catch. So you can see which one of those uh, wing parts I've dry brushed, you can see the difference. Once again, we'll come back in and show you one side that is dry brushed versus one side that isn't. You can just see the right side catching a little bit more detail than the left side. Okay, back to the base. The Agrax Earthshade has dried, so now it's time for some dry brushes. We're gonna hit with a two-stage dry brush, the first one being Dawnstone. See, I was worried about my thumb placement on my left hand. Try not to put any pressure on that uh, chain link and that's running between those two uh, rock outcrops. That would snap off, you need to be super careful. One thing you don't need to be careful with is this dry brush. It's a nice heavy dry brush. We're trying to catch all the raised edges. So yeah, go nuts. Obviously do your best not to leave any splotches or anything, but yeah, we're looking for a good coat. And when that dry brush is complete, we're gonna move on to Administratum Gray and give that a light dry brush over the top just to catch the raised edges. So this is a lot lighter than the last one. You can even see with my brush now how careful I'm being, how soft I'm bringing on the strokes. But you can see all of the detail screaming out at you now. Okay, back to the demon. It's time now to block in all of the metallic parts. So for this, we're gonna to go to Trusty Lead Belcher. And we're gonna give him a cover up on all of the metallic parts. So all of those armor panels um, on his left hand, his right shoulder and uh, his left thigh, right thigh, excuse me. And the chain mail running down the, uh, the middle of his cod piece and the blade of his sword. There's also about a million little hooks hanging off his wings. We're gonna spend a little bit of time and get them all silvered in as well. When that's all done, it should look something like this. And then we're gonna go over to Retributor Armor Gold. I mean, this is the first prince. His armor is quite ornate. Uh, also, he's got a lot of trim, and all that trim is going to go gold, especially his unbelievable sword. It's kind of hard to tell from this camera angle, but there is a, a series of details running around the, uh, the hilt and slightly up the blade. He's got his little ringlets, yep. And here is all the gold parts blocked in. Now it's time for the Null Oil Shade. This is going to go over all of the armor panels, and all the gold and silver. As you can see, I'm going quite heavy. I will pull it away from where it doesn't need to be, control it with my brush. That's what I'm doing now. Down the 
chainmail. Chainmail is one of those things where it goes to that stabbing motion again, like the rocky outcrop. You do want the shade to get in between all the different chain links. Just take your time. Make sure you get good coverage. I think it's to get in touch any of the skulls or the uh, leather straps in that. It's just be too difficult to paint around. We'll paint on top of those later on. It's a much easier order of affairs. Okay, while that Nolan oil is drying, we're gonna jump over to the base again. This time I'm gonna use personally Martian Iron Crust. Obviously, whatever color your demon army is or chaos army, whatever army you're going to do, I recommend basing around the Rocky Outcrop matching that army um, so he blends in great. I, for one, I'm going to be using this Martian Iron Crust technique. Um, a lot of my 40K projects over the next while are going to be having this basing scheme. Um, they said they're fighting all in the same campaign, all in the same planet. Um, so I'll do a contingent of demons up to match him um, and match that basing style. So here's the first coat, Martian Iron Crust. I can see you put on quite a thick coat of that. And um, that's just so as it dries, it does the correct cracking thing and looks really good. Okay, with that Nuln Oil uh, dry, it's time to go over some Black Templar contrast paint. This is the point where I was looking at the miniature and I thought that the... Um, his horns just matched the skin too much. It, it didn't work for me. Um, all of the work we did to it already is not wasted. It will show through the black contrast as if we've highlighted underneath it. You will see like the brighter ridges. Um, but I definitely wanted to make it stand out more. So I went around with the black temporal contrast. I did all the horns on his head. The horns coming out of the end of all of his wings on the top of his wings. Uh, his claws on his feet. Um, and any of the ridges and... The, the growth horns that are sprouting through his armor. You can see it on his left hand there in this shot that there's horns growing through them. If you've built yours, you'll know the ones I'm talking about. I also broke the uh, those up with a bit of black contrast. Just to break up that detail. And there's the black contrast applied. You can see there's a lot of definition in his face now um, with the breaking up of the gray skin. Flesh tear is red. I add a smidge of water to this. I usually don't recommend adding water to contrast, but I did just a, just a drop just to make this a little bit more translucent and flow a little bit nicer. Um, and once we apply it over the white, it starts to look like flayed skin this is because it's so thin now. So it's perfect for his uh, tabard thing. I spent a little bit of time uh, thinking about what color that should be until I looked at the box and realized it was flayed skin. <laughs> Go over into fur. So we're gonna use for all of the straps holding on the armor panels uh, and the straps holding the skulls. Um, down his loincloth. So you can see this is quick and easy because we've done so many dry brushes and stuff, it has catched all those edges underneath and it does just get naturally highlighted. You wanna be a little bit careful here. We will be layering up some of the silver parts again, but we won't be dry brushing those chain mill parts. So you wanna be careful. As you can see, I've thrown the gore grunt of fur over the skulls as well, because that'll just act as a nice quick base coat, which means that when we jump over to Shapley Bone here, we could just do a bit of light layering. We don't want to go crazy. People aren't going to be looking at the little skulls hanging off his chains more than his giant wings and his flaming sword. As it took the time to uh, get a little bit of paint on his teeth. 
for a model that's quite big, his teeth and mouth area are really small. So I don't think there was the space to do the, you know, three layers of uh, paint on the teeth going from dark brown to light brown. So I just threw a Yushapi bone um, coat over them and pretty much left them like that. You'll notice that his tongue is also uh, red. When I had the flesh tears red out for his tabard, um, I filled in his mouth with the flesh tears red. Um, just to, yeah, make the inside of his mouth the correct color. Now we're jumping up to a slightly brighter silver, the Runefang Steel, and we're gonna layer up those metallics. We're not trying to go crazy. We're just gonna do a little bit of blotchy uh, layering effects, a few stabbings, especially when, like those two armor panels are really easy to get. When we go up one more level, we're trying to fight around all those cracks in the armor and the holes from the, the horns. So you don't need to get it exactly right. And the sword blade. This is why I haven't started the flames yet. I want to get the sword right and then the flames will be on top of that. The flames go over the silver parts, that's okay, it's just a bit of glow. Whereas vice versa, you can't really have silver in the glow effect of the flame. Okay, now it's time to get that flame going. So one coat of Pterodon Turquoise is all I used. Pterodon Turquoise is a fantastic light blue turquoise color. It looks magical, it looks ethereal. It's perfect for uh, what we're trying to do here. Now, if you want to later on, you can come back and add some extra layers to that. It's something that I'm not gonna bother doing right now. I was happy enough when I applied it. Okay, back to this base. The Martian Iron Crust is finally dried. Looks cool. Um, but now it's time for uh, the painting of this. So we're gonna use the orange contrast color. And we're gonna give that a heavy coat all over the Martian Iron Crust and all over the, uh, the rocky outcrops up until the first step. You'll see me do it here. This is just going to blend the rocky outcrops into the base a little bit better. The contrast works in two ways. One, it's going to make it more in the orange tone, which is what I, I like the base color being. But also some of the basing paints have a tendency to, uh, to flake or chip off. That layer of contrast just holds it all together. Okay, here's all the chains. As you can see, I've taken about five seconds of time. I've sprayed all of the chains on the sprue with a coat of black and then a light coat of silver on the sprue. So from there, we will then snip them off the sprue and glue them onto the wings like this. So there's all the chains on the miniature. I've shown you how to paint all of the parts that are on these chains already. So I'm not gonna show you all again, just use the same silver technique for the silver, bone for the bone, anything like that. And there we have it. It takes absolutely no time at all to get it to that point. Once you have all the base coats done on the chains, like I was talking about, we'll throw a null or a wash all over the top, just like I've shown you previously in the video. Add a little bit of definition to all that chain. And to all those skulls. Make sure you're stabbing into the, the eye sockets and stuff and getting that shade going really nice. Now onto the base. As you can see, I've done the chains hanging between the rocks exactly the same way as I did chains on the wings. Now it's time for the dry brushing of the base now that the orange contrast has dried. So a heavy-ish coat of riser rust. Once again, pulling the uh, that earth tone back into the orange. Getting a nice bit of color into it. Adding a Kindle Flame next, just to bring out a bit of warmth back into it. You 
each dry brush getting lighter and lighter. And then Tyrant Skill dry brush as the last one, just to make it pop. I got this basin scheme off a, a colleague of mine, very talented guy, and uh, yeah, I would have never thought to use the the contrast paints to uh, to tint and shade the uh, the texture paints. So, thank you very much if you are listening. And trusty favorite, have it on black to uh, rim the base again, making the model look nice and neat and tidy. The black rim of the base was described to me as the miniature's plinth. As soon as the black rim ends, the miniature starts. The human eye also doesn't like to process and uh, acknowledge black. It just kind of forgets it is there. So on the table, you don't really notice it. And the last step is to glue Bellacore to his base. This is the final result. I'm super pleased with how it turned out. I really hope you guys uh, enjoy what you're seeing. Um, you've got the confidence now to go out and get your own Bellacor and get it painted up quick and easy. And uh, yeah, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to uh, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And if you have any questions about anything I did today or painting in general, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to each and every one of you. Remember, the plan is simple. We paint them all.